Hello, it's Peter Wright and Kathleen Bove in Ontario, Canada, with episode number 112 of The Yacking Show. This is a show for awakening you to new perspectives for the changing world we find ourselves in, and the world is certainly changing. A quick request, if you like our show, please subscribe to the channel you're either watching or listening on. That helps our guests get more exposure, and that's really good for everybody. We always have interesting guests for you. Today is no exception that I'm not going to steal Kathleen's thunder. It's her job to introduce the guests. So first, let me welcome our co-host in Kitch in Waterloo. I nearly said the wrong town. <laughs> Kathleen, how are you today? I'm doing great, Peter. Uh, thank you all so very much for tuning into our show. We so appreciate you and we love reading your comments. So please keep them coming. And if anyone out there is interested in being a guest on our show, please don't hesitate to reach out to either Peter or myself. And as Peter mentioned, we do have two special guests with us today, husband and wife. And uh, please welcome Lance and Kim Nielsen to the show. Kim, Lance, welcome. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Thanks so much for having us. Well, you, you. are the owners of Element Hair Salon located at the Boardwalk in Waterloo. You have been in business together for 27 years. Can you tell our audience a bit about yourselves and what made you decide to open your own salon? Uh, let's start with you, Lance. Okay. Uh, well, Kim and I met at hair school back in the day and uh, <laughs> we worked uh, together in a, in a salon at uh, Conestoga Mall for a bit. And it was always something in the back of our mind to open our, our own business. Uh, I've always been an entrepreneur. Uh, for most of my working life, I've been on my own in some form or another. And uh, I'll let Kim tell her story. But uh, it's not, it was just something that we just we had to do it. It was in our blood. And uh, we've, when the opportunity came along, we, uh, we did it. And the rest is history. Kim, you can tell your background. Yeah, so um, I've been raised from uh, with a, a father who's been an entrepreneur for his whole life, self-made man, very strong, determined father, who, you know, just, it's just in my blood to be out there on my own and, and uh, be an entrepreneur. Um, yeah, he owns, he had, uh, he owns real estate now and he's, yeah, he's a pretty amazing guy, so I, it's just, just how it has going to be. <laughs> yeah. And then together with, uh, yeah. So like Lance said, I was with a salon for 10 years and then uh, I got pregnant, uh, which we were trying for. We were married when we were 28 to had our first baby when we were 32. So, you know, we kind of needed to make a decision where I'm going to stay at the salon where I was or, start our new place. And so uh, I owned a, 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 a building with my father on Weber Street East, lived upstairs. And then Lance said there was a barber shop down below. And the reason why my dad handpicked that place for me was, and this was way down in Kitchener and all my clients were up in Conestoga Mall. I said, dad, I don't know if they're going to follow me. And he's like, you're the best of the best. They're going to follow you. And uh and so anyways, it, it, it just, we made it happen and Lance built, he uh, built Both that salon. He, well. he built that salon and, uh, and then we, there we go. That was our first place um, on Weber Street. And I ended up, uh, yeah, I brought all my clients. And uh, uh, when I, I had six months off for maternity, which hairdressers don't normally do back in the day, because the other way they would leave, they would lose so many of their clients. Um, but because Lance took care of my clients, plus I, we had an apprentice. Um, so we taught the apprentice how to do all my colors and whatnot. And Lance did uh, all the cuts. And so it was a really great, smart thing to do living upstairs. And so we were there for five years. And then we went to, we had an opportunity to go to Weber, we, uh, to Herb Center. And uh, we were there for 15 years and we wow. had up to, up to 12 stylists there at one time. Wow. And that's where we also decided to have our own product line, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that was Lance. I remember Lance saying, you know, yeah, that was thinking about the, the rent being, you know, double and, and, and whatnot, but 
Um, it was one of the best things that we did uh, was to go to, to Weber Street. And, uh, and why don't I let Lance have a turn to follow up with that? Yeah, mm-hmm. that Lance, um, you, well, I've got to tell you, I think for most of our audience and certainly for Kathleen and myself, you're preaching, you both, you're preaching to the converted here because we've been self-employed in one form or another for most of our, most of our respective lives. So we hear what you're saying, but yeah, tell us more about the motivation for starting your product range and, and how you went about that. Well, the product is interesting. It's something I've always been interested in, even from back in the early days, but back in those days, it were, it was cost prohibitive. Mm-hmm. Uh, to do it because the volumes had to be so high and plus it's very difficult to find people to work with um, in that industry because they're not public people like they're not a, you know go to a website and oh here's the chemist and here's the it's not like that you really have to dig mm-hmm. so anyway as things progressed uh, there were labs and companies that started to come out that were willing to do smaller runs, which, you know, we could accommodate. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we got pretty excited about that. So when we were at Herb Street, uh, we hooked up with a a lab that was in Hamilton and they had kind of core ingredient products that we worked with and you can tweak them a little bit. And uh, we started the element line uh, with, with their base. And that was an interesting move because one, um, it, so, it brands you in a different way when people mm-hmm. come into the salon, you see your own product line there. And it's interesting what's happened with that at the boardwalk, boardwalk. we can get that, that later. But what inspired me to, to, to get into doing that in the first place was the hair industry is full of brands that come and go. Mm-hmm. And we've been in a long time, we've seen a lot of them. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are started by families, uh, you know, just entrepreneurs. Uh, Paul just Mitchell, like us. One. They, they started, <laughs> Paul Mitchell, uh, I'm sure you've heard of that product line. Mm-hmm. Two guys, they started with uh, uh, $700 and they were selling out of their trunk. Mm-hmm. And it's turned into an international product, right? Sebastian would be another one. It was a family that started that. Um, Aveda is another one, a guy who his mother was into herbs and, and, uh, all, and all of that sort of natural ingredient stuff. He developed Aveda based on her uh, knowledge right. of that. But what happens is they, these companies, they launch and they launch within the hair industry. It gets to a certain point and then they sell. They sell mm-hmm. to Procter & Gamble or they sell to Estee Lauder or whatever. So over time, that sort of becomes a little bit tiring. And and not just because you lose, because it becomes so corporate, then that connection is lost with the original founders. And, and my thinking was, you know, we, we should, we, we should be doing this ourselves. And there's no reason not to do it ourselves. If they can do it, we can do it too. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. Oh, Excellent. Excellent. Well, since we're talking about your products, can you give us um, what products you carry? What what range of products do you carry? Kim, do you want to start? Or? Um, sure. So in the in the very beginning, uh, definitely needed a shampoo for colored hair, and uh, I really liked the fact that um, I always wanted to have make sure there's ingredients for the scalp. Um, the health of the scalp and the health of the hair and also as as natural ingredients as possible. So for the colored shampoo, we used meadow foam seed. Now meadow foam seed is a natural UV protector. And so that's, that's what is one of the reasons why I cut the hair color fades is from the sun, but also uh, many other, many other things such as a uh, uh, heavy surfactant surfactants, which is just harsh detergents. Mm-hmm. So taking out, taking that out, uh, taking out the harsh surfactants, um, like the sodium lauryl sulfate and replacing it with something, something milder was important to us. Um, and it's, and then the rosemary and mint shampoo was very highly important to us. Uh, men love it. The scent is gorgeous. Uh, we incorporated a lot of lavender in the beginning. So that was one of our high scents. And, you know, I just, I just researched it. I just said, what is the top scent that the highest 
uh, population likes and it was lavender. lavender. So that became, yeah, that became our top scent just based mm -hmm. on research. Um, pomades for the men and uh, sea salt spray. We started branching out to a company in, out West and we called them our, our tree huggers. <laughs> And they used really, really organic, amazing products. And we had about five uh, products from them. And uh, yeah, you just sort of do your research. You know, you go to hair shows and you, you look at what what's happening in trends. Well, I need a sea salt spray to get that look. So let's make a sea salt spray, but let's just not have any salt in it. Let's have pink Himalayan salt. So mm -hmm. things like that, right? So now moving into, uh, moving through through that, um, then you, when you have a new product, I would get our clients involved. So I would form a focus group between my longtime clients. Mm -hmm. So I would choose clients, you know, I started to recognize who I could work with the best. So the, if you came to me and you said, yeah, this product's nice, you know, you weren't in my next focus group. I needed to, uh, you know, and all my clients that are watching right now, they know who they are because I need your input. Like, are you going to buy this year after year? That's my, <laughs> right. that's my biggest question, right? So if I was going to look at a, a product for curly hair, I'm going to call, I'm going to have five people in my focus group that have curly hair. Curly hair, yeah. 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 And I, I'm going to need to know the performance of the product, the smell of the product and, and all these questions. And so that's, that's how we did it. We, if we were bringing a new product on, we would, you know, get focus groups and whatnot to, to just see the performance, the scent. And, you know, the, 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 the biggest question is, will you buy this uh, um, year after year? So uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm curious I, because you mentioned it. A sea salt spray? I know I digress here. <laughs> what is that? A sea salt spray. So yes, yes. So when you go, um, when you are at the beach and you go into the, the, the sea, right? and the sea has got salt in it, your hair reacts a totally different way. It, become, it has more movement. It has more texture. Okay. So the sea salt spray replicates that. Okay. Yeah. And so if so, if so, it actually would help people bring out natural movement in the hair that wouldn't have it. Ah, interesting. Right. So this, so this is why he, the surfers have such lovely hair, is it? <laughs> when you see these movies in California with the surf girls and boys. Yeah, or, or when you have clients that can't come back from a trip, uh, like an all-inclusive, I just came back from, you know, wherever. Um, and they were in the ocean. They said, "Oh, I wish my hair would look like that every day." The salt day. in the air too, right? The salt yeah. in the air too. In the air, yeah, sure, sure. Interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. Learn something new. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I know Kathleen's going to be going running off as soon as these restrictions are lifted. She's going to be off to a, a seashore somewhere. And <laughs> <laughs> or you could Lots. buy element sea salt spray. Or, yes, of right. course. Or down to you. Yeah, yeah, could do that. Uh, Lance, I've got. I want to switch away from the products for a moment. Um, I know that uh, that uh, you'd indicated you feel quite strongly about having the right philosophy and the right set of values, not just for business but for life as well. So tell our audience a little bit more about your thoughts on that. You know, within our business and and, and myself personally, always looking for growth and. Uh, I think that's super important, like always learning, always uh, advancing yourself, getting new ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of uh, listening to audio books. Uh, with our staff, we like to encourage constant learning. So we provide an environment that is conducive to that. We, Kim and I spend time with them personally is one thing that we do, uh, but we have a lot of resources available to us to, help move them forward in in their skill set but also just the way we work and the w things that we talk about with them is life skills basically um, we can't do this now but what we were doing up until this happened we'd have style like celebrity type stylists come in to our salon and, and teach private classes which is that doesn't happen very often in the mm -hmm. industry and it's not it's not cheap to do that but we've done it uh, one of the celebrity stylists that we may, got to know in New York City, and we've been down there multiple times uh, spending time with that group, uh, Nick Arrojo, uh, he actually personally came up to our studio to teach a class for a day. He flew in in the morning from New York City, wow. taught the class, 
got back on a plane at night and went back to New York City. It was a pretty amazing time. And I, if you, I'm not sure if you know who Nick Arrojo is, but he was the lead stylist on What Not to Wear, the TLC show for about nine years. Wow. Yeah, so he, and he's well known within the industry right now as a, as a leader. He's got um, two locations in Man, uh, Manhattan. Uh, one of them is 15,000 square feet. It's a Ooh, big, imagine, like that's a huge, yeah, yeah. huge, um, huge. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, uh, philosophy is just sharing, learning, constant growth, and just being the best you can be. Right. I, I got to follow up with one on that. I see a guitar behind you there. Have you always been a musician or is that part of the constant learning process? Uh, well, I've always been involved in music. Um, less so lately because it just there's just so much to work on but uh yeah back uh you know many many years ago you know, back in the time when kim and i first met i was playing and i played in several different bands i've done a lot of recording over wow. the years which is uh, i really enjoy doing that so started when we started recording it was back in the time of two inch tapes which they don't even make yes. those anymore <laughs> Uh, in Toronto and uh, now you can do everything digitally and you know right. I've got my own equipment and, and all of that so yeah I've scored some movies local movies uh, wow very good man of many talents eh? <laughs> <laughs> very good <laughs> I, I got to show my story that Kathleen's heard numerous times but this will really interest you because you talk about can I Kathleen I know absolutely you go with my story <laughs> I'll keep it really short but because you're interested in learning I'll tell it to you and our audience if they haven't heard it, when I was 10 um, at school and I, I grew up in Africa, we had a very fierce uh, Scottish lady who was our English teacher and she was delegated to teach us singing and music. And on the first class, we were singing and she stopped me and she said, Peter Wright, you are absolutely useless. You will never be able to sing. You'll never play a musical instrument and you won't read music. So when you come next week, bring a book and sit in the corner. And I believed that for over 40 years. And yet my dad had played in an army band. And then I had a heart attack and I couldn't run anymore and I needed a huge goal. So I said, what's impossible? Learn to play music, play an instrument, learn music. And I did. I taught myself, then I started going for lessons. And I'm not good. and I'm not in Lance's category anywhere near, but I can play a tune. So it just shows that that learning is important, right? Yeah, well, speaking of uh, vocals, one, there's one thing I couldn't do while I, I started playing. And it's something I was kind of apprehensive about, to be honest, uh, for the longest time. And then finally, it's something I wanted to do, though. Mm. And because I like to write songs, it, you know, it's better if you can sing them yourself. Sure, sure. So I started taking lessons. There was, uh, we go to some health food stores and there was a, a, a vocal teacher, Marianne Epp. Uh, I don't know what she's doing now, but this is going back a few years now. And I started taking lessons with her and it just started working through that whole process. And then I went to Brian Vollmer. He's the lead singer for Helix for a while. And uh, they both studied with the same person. I forget the person's name now that was a, a notable uh, vocal teacher. Anyway, uh, just working through that, I became the, uh, the front person in a, a few bands and after that, you know, so it just well been growing and just working on it. And yep. there it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, well, well done. Very good. But back to Kathleen. So, Kim, you studied with some celebrity hairstylists from New York, Sacramento, and Toronto. You have to tell us, what was that like? Well, it's first, I first got my taste uh, back when we were, we just had gotten married in 1990. And we made, uh, we went to, I went to California and studied with the Sebastian artistic team. And now, um, there's a difference between celebrity stylists within the industry that the public wouldn't really know about. And then there's like, you know, within like Nick, who's a public, public figure. figure. Yeah. So there's a difference there. Um, working with the uh, artis artistic team of Sebastian and Tony and Guy uh, really takes you to the next level, really takes you to the next level. And there's a difference between learning just haircuts and learning techniques. So there's a lot of really cool techniques that I learned along the way. And it's funny because I'll be cutting somebody's hair and I'll say, I'm, I'm going to do this cool technique. So this was bit, like back in 1990, I'm going to do this thing called point cutting. And I'll say, you know, let me know how you think about it. And I'll say that the reasoning behind the point cutting is you can cut a straight line in the hair, but if you texturize the ends, 
it gives the illusion uh, that it's been already two weeks. You know, it's been living mm -hmm. for two weeks. It, it has more texture, more movement. And I tell you, every single person came back and said, can you do that really weird thing that you did? <laughs> so I got to, I got to know that like, there's, there's learning to cut hair, you know, this way, the regular way. And then there's artistic, artistic teams and also going and being with them one-on-one. -on -one. And I just got a huge taste for that. And that's just uh, been incredible. So yeah, California with Sebastian and then New York city with the Tony and Guy artistic team. And then the best thing Lance and I ever did was when we were building our salon in, at the boardwalk, uh, we just wanted to go to New York to go to something called the international beauty show. And that's where we met Nick and the whole Erosio gang, uh, Gerard Scarpese. I mean, there's just been some incredible artists there and, you know, their passion of helping stylists really resonates with me. Cause that's, that's what I do for our staff is, you know, I'm just like a natural born teacher. Uh, Let's see who else is there. When we we flew to to Sacramento to work with Dove Palmer, who's a huge huge uh, icon in the industry, and it was a class called Teach the Teacher. So it just takes me to the next level of teaching, um, and Lance as well, and working with Adam Federico, who like this guy flies all over the world in different salons and whatnot. So you know it's. It's, it's really, I really encourage every stylist out there to, to do, to do that, to make sure that they are working one-on-one -on -one with people that uh, can take their craft to the next level. So. Mm. Wow. It sounds fascinating. Eh? Yeah. 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 I got, mm -hmm. want to go on a different topic with one a question for Lance. You, you're um, president of the Silver Tongue, I think it is. Is it Waterloo Silver Tongue Toastmasters? Silver Tongue Club. Yeah, and I, I also been involved in Toastmasters quite a while. But uh, from your point, has being a member of Toastmasters and an executive in a club helped you in business, helped you in life? What, what would oh, you absolutely. say about Toastmasters? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's done a great deal. I, I feel I've, I've been in other things where I've served on executives, and you know, you learn that sort of process, and it's similar. From you know, I was in Rotary for a while, and it operates in mm -hmm. a very similar fashion. And I've been on other executive boards too, or committees or what have you. So it's useful for that because it does train you how to operate in that. So as president of the club, you're leading these meetings the majority of the time. So uh, that is obviously a useful tool and that can be used anywhere. Uh, and as far as public speaking goes, you know, uh, our industry, when you're doing, you're doing presentations. So if you are teaching a class or something, well, that's a presentation, right? So right. you can carry those skills over to that. Now we're not doing that sort of thing anymore. It's all online now. So I've been involved in all sorts of different uh, presentations and, and discussions online with different uh, different groups. And now we've got another medium called Clubhouse. I don't know if you've heard of that or mm -hmm. not. I have. Uh, you know, just last week, talking about celebrity stylists, I was in a, dis a discussion group and a speaker as they have it on the stage in this discussion group with other celebrity stylists in the United States. So uh, Toastmasters carries, carried me through all that because there would have been a time just like the singing where I would have been a little bit more maybe introverted and right. not been as you know, forthcoming, uh, but Toastmasters, because you're practicing it on a regular basis. And that's the important word is you're practicing. Practicing. Uh, it just, it just starts to come and starts to flow I and mean, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I agree. I agree. I endorse what you say. And that was my experience with Toastmasters as well. It, uh, the practice and the, uh, the learning and the feedback is, is excellent. No, good. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. Yeah. Actually, Thanks, this, Christine. this, this month marks our third year for having our own Toastmasters club. Really? This is the, this, yeah, this, this April is the it's third good. year. Yeah, it's been, it's been Excellent. wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it's been really good. good. Well, we have to ask you, how has COVID affected the salon business? <laughs> Kim? Well, that's Kim. A, a <laughs> <laughs> Kim, uh, how has it affected well, Right us? now we're, we're shut down. Right? Yeah. So, so you're going down to near zero revenue, yeah. uh, which... You know, we're at the boardwalk. It's a triple A location. So as you can imagine, the rent is not cheap. Sure. Um, 
So that's the biggest problem right there is you're at zero revenue. Uh, luckily, we've got good landlords to work with and, and you know, we've been able to, to work through all of this and it's, it hasn't been uh, too much of an issue so far. Uh, I mean, it depends on how long it goes on for. We have some sure. friends in Toronto that haven't even done any business in 2021. So yeah. they've been shut since November mm -hmm. and they're still not open. So, I mean, that takes a toll. So within the industry, uh, mental health of the, you know, employees and uh, they, they're getting strained. Uh, owners are getting stressed out. Uh, the financial impact is huge. Like we've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars and you won't regain, you'll never regain that because, you know, somebody that, this is what's happened over the past year, is somebody that would normally have come in maybe six times, seven times over the year have only come once or twice. Mm -hmm. so they're not going to come in and get five or six haircuts or services no. done. No, right? that's gone. So you've lost, that's gone. That's, you're not going to get that. Uh, others have transitioned out of color. That people that used to get color done because they let their hair the gray grow in, they're not mm -hmm. getting color done anymore. So that revenue is gone. It's really changing the landscape a lot. Then how you how we have to operate too has changed quite a bit. And and I'm fine with that actually. It's it's brought out some other things that we've never would have considered before in a positive light. Mm -hmm. um, how we're operating the salon, how we're operating with the staff. Um, certainly we've always had you know, sanitation is it's, it's a requirement. We get inspected regularly right. prior to COVID, mm -hmm. uh, but we really upped our game uh, with, we've got barriers installed. Like we really made it a, uh, an environment that will not transmit any COVID to anybody. We, it's totally safe. Oh we God. had the Ministry of Labor uh, and they sent three officers in not that long ago to uh, inspect our place. And they thought it was excellent. And it was a high level of safety. So, so those are some positive things that have come out of it. Uh, but it's, it's definitely changed the landscape and it trickles mm -hmm. down to everybody, like the suppliers and of manufacturers and yep. because mm -hmm. no, you know, nobody's selling that much, as much product as they used to, because it's not mm -hmm. being used. It's a huge impact on this industry, and and it is for yeah. others like restaurants too. It'd be the same sure. same sort of thing. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. The, no, it's it's just big. The first lockdown, um, I I just I I just kind of resonate in a in a positive way all the time, and so my mind went to making color kits for clients, and I I we were the first salon in Waterloo Region to do this. And uh, I got in quite a lot of trouble from my sales rep, but uh, because of our color line. But, you know, once I explained how professional it was and I kept the price point high and I made a video and I colored my own hair and I really set the rules straight and uh, I did a lot of things right. And clients were they were so appreciative and so happy mm -hmm. to get their own custom color kits. And they were crying and they were saying how wonderful it made them feel. So I also took the time to call as many clients during the day as possible. And that, that's really great as a business owner because you really connect with these people, people that you haven't talked to before. So there's my clients, but then there's everybody else's clients mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily get a chance to talk to. And so you can get really awesome feedback that you would never get before. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, there's also some positive things that we really, you know, continue that to, to look at uh, that came out of it as well. Just uh, mm. so, so I, I've got a tongue in cheek question for you. Um, can you analyze the color that's required over Zoom? I mean, could you could you do something about <laughs> some of these? Great absolutely. Hairs? Absolutely. We have we have we have something for everybody. Yeah. I'm sure. yeah. I, I yeah. got to you. I don't worry about it. You know. I'm gray. I'm gray. Um, we did a, we did a, uh, or Kim did a, um, a Zoom uh, consultation with somebody in Winnipeg, not that long ago. Really? Oh, that's excellent. That's, we're, we're running short of time and I've got a burning question I've got to put to both of you, whichever okay. one of you would like to answer, we can both answer. We, we ask this question of most of our business guests who are entrepreneurs. You've both been active in the business community for many, many years. So in your opinion, what's a single biggest factor that differentiates those who become successful, not just in business, in life as well, from those who remain average. What's the key? 
do you think? Do you want to go, Kim? No, you go first. Uh, I would say the key is, again, constant growth. Uh, mm -hmm. That I think is vitally important. Uh, the key is also in the details. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I tend to, th I like to envision the big picture. Kim really likes to get really nitty gritty, a little bit more nitty gritty than I do, although I can be pretty nitty gritty too, but in different ways. But I think that's what really separates people that make a difference and, and people that don't. So that can be, uh, there's so much, like, we, we could actually do a whole other episode. Uh, there's like, things like, how do you word your, your, your product? How, what's your marketing wording, right? So uh, I can get into that like for an hour probably. Uh, a lot of people will not really think about what they're, they're actually saying and there's too many words, right? Whereas mm -hmm. if, you, if you get into the details and really focus on what's being said, how can you get that, you know, 10 or 15 word sentence down to three and really deliver a, a punchy message, right? right. So and it's taking that sort of philosophy and applying it to everything. Very important. Very important. Kim, mm -hmm. do you want to add to that? Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm thinking a, a lot of things are coming in my head, but there's one thing that keeps coming back to, to Lance and I, um, from clients and from suppliers is our innovation is very strong. Mm -hmm. Um, we both have muchness. <laughs> I love that word muchness, you know, self-discipline, innovation. Yep. Those are really the key ingredients. You know, you just, you got to you got to do it for yourself. You just, you have to have that inborn, you know, you, nobody else is going to do it for you. So muchness. Right. Yeah. Right. And thanks. Thanks very much for that. And, and what I'm going to throw back at you, what I hear from both of you is enthusiasm, which, mm -hmm. um, which is lacking in a lot of people. Um, yeah. So that's great to hear a team like you two guys, both enthusiastic for what you've been doing and have been doing for a long time. That's also, you know, that that's really good to see that. So that's enough for me. Back to Kathleen. Well, it looks like we're out of time, but can Here you tell our audience how uh, they can connect with you? Okay, well, uh, you can connect with us online. So for the salon, it'd be elementhair.com or customercare at elementhair.com. Uh, for the product line that we are in the midst of launching is Rockstars. You can visit rockstar.ca and uh, see what's going on there. Okay. And uh, those are the best ways to reach us. Great. We will put those on as subtitles. Uh, thank you very much for that. Okay. Thank you. And it's been great. It's been really interesting. Uh, found out more about industry I know a little about and uh, met two lovely people. So this is a great job that Kathleen and I have, believe me. Oh, we, you, love it. we love what we do. And uh, thank you both so much for joining us today. It was, uh, I learned a lot too. S sea salt spray. I have <laughs> love that. But <laughs> thank you. And thank you all so much for tuning into our show. We so appreciate you. We love reading your comments. So please keep them coming. And again, if anyone out there is interested in being a guest on our show, please don't hesitate to reach out to either Peter or myself. And until next time, everyone, bye-bye. <laughs> 